So this is Sarah. Hi. <laughs> we're, and I'm Dan and we're sheep farmers in New South Wales. Fine we're wool growers. Fine wool growers, yeah. So merinos. Yes. And tell us about the merinos, sweetheart. Oh, I don't know. They're just beautiful sheep and I enjoy the wool. Yeah. So that's a part of what we do. Sarah's about, what, ninth generation shepherd? Something like that. At least. That. Yeah. One of her ancestors was John Noble, who was responsible for the Bungaree um, bloodline of merino sheep in uh, South Australia back in the 18, from about the 1850s to 1900. He was a long time stud master there. Anyway, we digress. So today we're going to feed the sheep. And so these, these are uh, pellets in. Ordinarily, we try and feed them lupins, but uh, during the drought in 2018 and 2019, lupins got very expensive, so we've um, been able to source these pellets from Gyra Milling, which is a local source. Um, they have similar levels of energy, perhaps a little bit less protein. These are the dogs. That's good. Oh, you lovely dog, good. And that's Millie. Millie got run over when she was about 12 months old, so she hasn't really been able to work because she nearly couldn't walk again, but we managed to get her walking again. And Pud's about two and a half years old, I think. Can't remember now. So this is the river crossing. And um, the river's quite, been quite high. Um, it was up about a week ago and we couldn't get across the river at all to feed the sheep. So now we can, but it's still quite high. And fortunately the river's got a rocky bottom so there's not much fear of getting bogged, but the biggest risk is trying to get out the other side. It's a little bit slippery over the other side on the bank. But gee, there's a lot of nice lot of water going down there. In the drought, this was just totally dry. It was just bone dry, this river. <coughs> there was a couple of holes a little bit further up that had a little bit of water in them, but not very much. And here's the bank. So we got stuck here the other day, but fortunately we managed to get ourselves out. And oh, we only just made it up the bank. Gate opener extraordinaire. So these years are the twinners, Scander's twinners. There's about 230 in this mob. And they need an extra level of nutrition over the ones that are Scander's singles. Okay, so these years are in about condition score three. Condition score is a measure of the meat and fat covering their backbone at the end of the rib cage, um, and it gives you an idea of how well they how well they've been fed, their good their nutrition status. Um, so one's in a good condition score are more likely to raise their lambs or raise a healthy lamb, and so for uh, twins you'd like to have the condition score somewhere up near three and a half. <coughs> so that they can raise the two lambs. The issue with merinos compared to crossbreds is that merinos don't tend to raise twins very well. <coughs> so a benchmark would be that from 100 uh, twin ewes they would raise 150 lambs. That would be pretty good going for merinos. And last year we managed to get that. Um, this year we'd like to see if we can improve on that um, and what we're going to do is land them in smaller mobs. We'll split this mob into three mobs of uh, 70 and land them in separate paddocks. That's supposed to help. Ideally we'd like to get down to 50 in a mob uh, but we just don't have enough lambing paddocks. Um, so that's a project for next year to get another lambing paddock at least for the, um, for the twins. Because the, uh, uh, the pellets real in that bin, uh, it's not level, so it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly how much you put out. So that's what Sarah's done. She's stopped, 
um, asked me to stop and she's got the paddle and she's levelled it out and she's worked out exactly how much we've fed out. Um, it's pretty important to know what you're feeding out because um, it, is it actually measured, you know, um, there's, a, there's levels in the bin and we know what we're feeding out. So this is pasture that we put in earlier this year and it's had a lot of rain on it and it's come away really well. It's been really good. We might even be able to get a little bit of grazing off this in a few days time. Better have a look at it when we get back, but yeah, very pleased with this. It's, uh, compared to trying to do it in the drought, wasn't much fun. So these ones are the singles, there's about 360 in this mob, of which about 24 are dry, um, so they're getting a bit of a free feed. Now, we've just bought those from the paddock over there near that uh, power line tower and uh, into this paddock here. This paddock here has actually probably got a little bit less feed um, but what we're doing is we're drawing them forward closer to the shearing shed because uh, we're going to shear in about two weeks time. Um, the, the, we just do it in stages to bring them forward um, just saves so trying to do it all at once. These sheep, are, when we last did the condition score, were about 3.3, uh, sorry, 3.1 condition score. Um, so they are in fairly good condition, uh, but for the past week we haven't been able to feed them <coughs> because we couldn't get across the creek. So this is the first supplementary feed they've had for a while. And as you can see, there's not a huge amount of grass in this paddock, and we'll do a feed on offer, uh, a foo test shortly. Um, but there was a re quite a reasonable amount in the other paddock. There would have been a foo of at least 2,000 a week ago, so it wasn't too bad. They'd be they should be maintaining condition. Um, <coughs> right, so we'll go and do a foo test. This is serrated tussock. It's not out there. Enemy, weed Pub number one. Public enemy number one. Um, although that one's quite interesting because something's had a bit of a chip at that. We need to have action showing removal of serrated tussock. There we go. Very happy to have that one out. The odd one just pops up in the oddest places. The other thing you can see there is that that soil is quite moist. Normally at this time of the year it will be dry as a bone. But um, So it's been a very good season. We've had lots of rain. This dam's been a bit of a problem. Ever since we've put it in, it leaks. So, to move forward. To move forward. So the, um, it doesn't leak right out, but it, it can drop down to the level that it's at at the moment. So we're going to estimate the feed on offer. The quality of this is probably medium, isn't it? With um, so some of this grass is quite green, but there's still dry grass in here as well. And at this time of the year, it's much better feed than we would normally expect to see. We wouldn't expect to see anywhere near as much green grass as this. This being late August. Is it still August? Just. Just August, yes, okay. So, do a food. So, down there, there's probably three centimetres. Three centimetres there. And then there's 10 or 11 centimetres there. Five or six there. It's quite variable two or three there, so each centimetre equals at medium quality about 200 kilograms of dry matter per hectare um, on medium quality, yeah. Right. So if you're saying we're averaging six or seven through there, say so six, so six twos are 1200, so you're saying that there's 
1200 kilograms of dry matter per hectare through there. We'll have a look at Probably the. A bit more. Yeah, it might be a bit more through here. Um, but other areas of the paddock are probably going to be less, so we'll go and have a look at that um, as we go through the top of the paddock. And then we'll have a look at our lifetime year management app on the farm and see how much these twinners actually need. Okay, so this will show us how um, the uh, lifetime year management app helps us calculate the nutri uh, nutrition requirements for these, uh, in this particular instance, the twins. So we select the mob, which is the twins, and we can see that the condition score report is 2.97, um, so almost 3. <clears throat> We're trying to get them up to 3.2, um, so that means that they need an energy requirement of 15.6. Off the pasture, which we measured at 1,200 uh, kilograms per hectare of dry matter, they're getting an energy. Uh, they're getting energy of 11.88 megajoules per day, so nearly 12 megajoules per day. So that means from the supplement, which is the pellets that we were feeding out, they have to get nearly four megajoules per day. <clears throat> so if I press on that little one. It tells me, okay, we've got pellets, and behind the pellets we've input the data as to what um, energy and protein and so on and so forth that the pellets generate. <clears throat> so with a mixture of rations of pellets only, 100% pellets, no lupins, you could change that to hay or whatever you wanted. Um, we need, um, it's telling us that we need 0.32 kilograms per head of sheep uh, per day. So if I press on the mob here, and it knows how many is in the mob, so it tells me I need 46 kilograms of pellets per day to try and get our um, condition score up to 3.2 from 3. So in 30 days. <clears throat> so that's about, and we feed them every three days, so it's about 150 kilos uh, every time we feed them. So that's what we're doing at the moment. That's and that's roughly how the, um, or briefly how the lifetime year management app helps you calculate the feed requirements for your sheep. And it's a very powerful tool. Uh, saves you doing it manually. You could do it on a spreadsheet, of course, but the app is great because you can do it down the paddock. I haven't done it down the paddock here because there's too much wind, um, and that bugs up the filming. So I've just brought it inside and shown you inside. Oh, you're a clever dog, aren't you? Oh, you're a clever dog. Oh, yes, I'm standing up there on the wool packs. On the, okay? Oh,